we have a lot of work to do, but the first step in that is to actually admit you have a problem and America has a big problem. Hi, my name is Dr. Ebony Jade Hilton. I'm an associate professor of anesthesiology and critical care medicine. Today, I'm here to talk about COVID-19 and its impact on the communities of color. So what we see from COVID-19, it has unearthed this concept of racial health disparities. Those communities that are highly populated by racial minorities, they have three times higher infection rates than Caucasian communities. Well, we also know it's for African-American communities in comparison to whites, that's six times higher mortality rate. And the reasons behind that is multifactorial. For one, those people tend to be the central workers. We know that only one in every five African-Americans, for instance, can work remotely at home. We know that one in every six Hispanic Americans can work remotely at home. So they are the grocery store workers, they are the bus drivers, they are the essential workers that are being sent out and unfortunately then being exposed to this virus at higher rates. So not only are they being exposed at work while they're helping to keep this nation afloat, but then they're then returning home to communities that tend to be highly densely populated. When we're talking about the mortality, you oftentimes hear us say that those are what older people are higher risk and those that have pre-existing conditions. But we can't talk about heart disease and heart failure and, and even asthma and chronic respiratory diseases without talking about the social determinants of health. Black and brown communities have been systemically impacted by these racial policies. We have the influence of redlining from the 1930s that literally structures communities that have now higher in, um, industry uh, present in that zip code. And what is that spewing of toxins within the air and water? How does that influence conditions such as asthma or chronic respiratory illnesses? We also know that obesity and, and hypertension and heart failure are linked to diet. And you can't talk about that without talking about, you know, food deserts that exist within certain zip codes. So moving forward in COVID-19, we have to think about as we're reopening the economy, how do we keep people safe? Well, we need to do what I call the three T's and that's testing, tracing, and treatment. So testing, we need to go and target those communities that we know are higher risk. We need to make tests readily available to them. Not that they have to come to us, but that we actually go to them. If they come up positive, we need to then trace them. So we need to have teams in place that can say, where has this person been not only today, but also for the last five to 10 days? And then the last T of that is gonna be treatment. And yes, that means vaccines. And yes, that means medication, but it also means the treatment of isolation. We know that many families, and particularly those of black and brown communities have multi-generational homes. So we need to provide resources where they can actually isolate. In the middle of this pandemic, we don't have time to compromise. We must protect the ACA and it even expand its coverage to make sure that every American has access to healthcare that they can actually afford.